Hey guys, Ivan Rosero here from SDCGN, the San Diego Community Garden Network. And I want to show you today a quick and dirty way to put some microelectronics to use in measuring the uh, content of moisture in the soil of your garden, as well as ambient temperature and humidity. Okay? So the first thing I want to do is just show you what it looks like when everything's working. So this readout that you see on my screen is constantly updating some number of seconds. And you see these numbers down here. M1 stands for moisture sensor 1, which looks like this guy. Uh, and the other one is just the same thing, except that it's labeled M2. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my tongue on this between these two prongs, and you should see one of these two numbers change in response to that. So just keep your eye on the readout, and here we go. Okay, and there you have it. So moisture sensor 2 went from 0 to 50% moisture, which means my tongue is not exactly wet, but wetter than 0. Okay, so here's how this uh, is built pretty quickly. First, let me identify the components, and you can get all of these things online at Amazon.com. There's also a website called SparkFun.com, which I'd like to use. So this is called the Arduino microcontroller. This is essentially the sort of the brains of this of this setup. It's a tiny computer, uh, and we're not used to thinking of it as, as a computer because it doesn't have a digital display or mouse or keyboard, but it's actually a computer. So one of the nice things about the Arduino is that it exposes these very nice and easy to use uh, input-output ports. They're labeled uh, on the actual board itself. It's these uh, hard plastic things sticking out of the front. So you can see here the temperature and humidity probe has one green wire coming out going to port number 0, 02 on the digital side of the Arduino. This is the guy that's responsible for measuring both the humidity and the temperature. And we only need one wire because the Arduino is actually talking to it directly and asking it for the temperature. So it's not a direct measurement, it's asking it for the measurement, and so one wire suffices. For the moisture sensors, we have the two wires that come in from the prongs themselves eventually wind up through here and end up being these two wires. And for each one, there's a little tiny circuit board that is responsible for doing some relatively uh, simple electronics manipulation to make the signal a little bit clearer and easier for the Arduino to read. And then finally you see that for each one of these little circuit boards there's one wire coming out going to the analog ports number 0 and number 1 of, our, of the Arduino board in here. So once you download the Arduino and just go a little bit through it online you'll see the difference between analog ports and digital ports. I'll leave that as an exercise for you guys. And here finally are the red and black wires. This is just uh, 5 volts and ground coming out to my little breadboard and this is what's providing power to the sensor so it's the power is coming from the Arduino board into the breadboard where we're testing things and powering each of, each of these elements okay and that's the basic idea with the sensors themselves you guys didn't see when you were looking at the probe that there are some lights attached to this as well so if I put my tongue on the probes again you'll see some of these lights light up there you go and that's moisture sensor number two. The number of lights that light up is proportional to how wet the moisture is, the, the moisture in your soil is, or, or rather directly what the readout of these probes are. So that's the physical layout, the physical assembly. you also find this guy online and we'll give you a link to that at the end of this video. In fact, we'll give you a link to everything here at the end of this video. The last thing I wanted to show you is that the whole setup is powered through our standard USB cord that goes to the computer in a standard sort of way, so you guys are used to doing that. And this is where things get a little bit hairy if you are not used to looking at code. But what you're looking at on the screen is computer code, and this is actually what is loaded onto the Arduino. This is altogether, in essence, what drives the Arduino and allows it to function the way it does. And the nice thing about being able to see this on your computer is that, first of all, even though it is sort of a lot of gobbledygook, it's not a lot of gobbledygook. So we're going to put this online for you guys too. But you can sort of see, for example, that A1, you could imagine that standing for analog 1 and analog 2. Those are the two ports that read the moisture levels. You have things like uh, digital, like analog read. That's just a command for, hey, give me the value of that port of the essentially the sensor at some point. You get this DHT, which stands for humidity and temperature. D is just a, a prefix there. So you can see, even if you don't understand what's exactly going on, that there are certain 
uh, hints at what the code is doing to the electronics. Set color, for example, you could imagine that having to do with the LED lights. Uh, but you don't have to know this because we are going to show you how to do it in the link that we provide at the end of this video. And the end result is basically this nice little readout that uh, gives you a real-time um, idea of what's going on in your garden bed.